We are proud to be in the company of Vidya Kanagala. Uh, Vidya Kanagala is head of market risk stress testing at Morgan Stanley. She is a global leader in the financial service industry, passionate about advancing opportunities for women and an avid volunteer in action for climate change. An engineer by education and approach, she is a strategic leader with expertise in product analysis, risk management, and process improvement. Vidya has expertise in devising innovations, innovative solutions to resolve business and technology challenges. Please welcome Vidya Kanagala. I was going to go take uh, Doug's route, but I carefully wrote my uh, points that I want to cover tonight. Um, so I'm going to use my notes. Um, firstly, congratulations, Team She Jobs. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I hope this evening you all are reflecting upon the vision, the work, the path that you have taken over the last two years. Reflecting, pa pausing and reflecting is a very, very important step in the, in the long journey. So it's, you know, enjoy the evening. Uh, this morning when I was on the flight uh, to Dallas from New York, um, early in the morning I was thinking, there's probably only few people that I've met here in the past, some friends on this table, um, of course Swati. And I was wondering uh, what could um, I share that you all will walk away with two or three things that as tools that you would apply in any decision making in your careers. So, um, but before that, uh, it must have looked quite complicated on what I do at Morgan Stanley. So I want to just share a little bit about what I do, so you all can understand. Um, I had stress testing function for market risk. What does it mean? There's a lot of different mac macro events that are happening. Investment banks typically trade many different products from equities to the stocks, to commodities, to private equity, to SPG, or securitized products. So my job is to think about what are the various macroeconomic events that are happening in the world and how can that impact markets and Morgan Stanley's portfolio. It is more fun than ever to be in this job. As you all can relate and evidence, the world is moving at a fast pace. Pandemic, we are seeing events that we haven't seen in the, you know, there isn't a historical precedence. Starting with the pandemic, starting with looking at the Russia-Ukraine situation, or the China-Taiwan situation, or the deglobalization that's happening, or inflation pressures that we are seeing, including climate change. These are all the topics that I think about day in, day out. Um, so it's been fun two to three years. Of course, we all struggled in personal lives and making sure our careers and families are intact. Um, but a different perspective for me, it's been fun learning over the last two to three years uh, looking at the markets. Outside work, I'm passionate about a few things. I was fortunate enough as a young girl to be exposed to the wonders of engineering, um, solutions that were real world through the work that my dad did. He was an engineer working on um, electrical machines and generators and turbines, some of which are installed at um, Niagara Falls, for example. So I grew up as an engineer. I was fortunate uh, to see all those wonders. So one of the things that I would echo, I think Doug has mentioned before, it's very important to expose young girls at their elementary school level to build that interest, to help them see if that's the area they would be interested in. Without that exposure, it's very hard for them to see what the opportunity spectrum is, and they tend to make stereotype decisions. So if you have a young girl growing up in your house, including my daughter, an eight-year-old, I spend a lot of time taking her to various events and exposing her to different topics. Um, outside work, I spend time uh, educating young girls uh, in the Lego competitions, or uh, I, I'm also locally trying to uh, start a club, uh, a coding club for the girls. Uh, but apart from that, um, I spend a lot of time at work volunteering. Uh, I'm part of a multicultural innovation lab that Morgan Stanley has started a few years ago. It's an accelerator program where they are trying to fund um, new startups, uh, startups by multicultural, uh, diverse background uh, entrepreneurs and help them proceed and reduce the funding gap in the space. 
Um, so again, um, these are all the things that uh, keep you uh, passionate about uh, what you do. Um, but more than anything, I, I thought my journey, I would share my journey a little bit um, and uh, maybe um, to conclude with two or three things that I want you all to walk away. So anytime I talk to uh, folks, uh, you know, the analyst program or interns or anybody else or high school kids in my neighborhood, I start by saying I'm an electrical engineer who turned into a financial engineer. engineer. So like I explained, I always wanted to be designing machines and I went to pursue an electrical engineering degree and I succeeded you know, with a gold medal coming out of the school. But it's a realization to me when I started interning at the firm and I realized this is not what I want to do. That was quite a difficult moment for me. For years, uh, I spent a ton of energy. I've learned so much in the physics space and it was a moment of realization that something is not okay. I spent a lot of time, I, didn't, I did not ignore my intuition, so that's another point I think Doug mentioned. Don't ignore your intuition, follow your intuition. I spent some time thinking into what was it about. What I realized was it takes years to design a new machine, to design, uh, to test and to roll it out. That was not okay for me. That was not okay for me to be, um, to be motivated enough for my next step. So I need some interim goals, I need some interim outcomes to push myself to the next level. That's when I realized, which was a quite hard decision, that I have to do something else and not electrical engineering. So I moved on, I took a different job back home in India. I had an opportunity to work with insurance clients across the globe. I worked in India, in Australia, which is when I realized, hmm, actuarial science, that should be, uh, you know, that, that must be fun. I should probably go back to US and, you know, uh, go to grad school and do actuarial science. But this was 2008 and Lehman crisis, the tremors were felt across the globe. At the time, I was in Sydney, Australia, working for an insurance client and prepping my applications for actuarial science degree. And I started reading a lot more, researching a lot more. I took another year um, and I figured out this probably this is, this is the place I want to invest my future in. I, I moved into New York, went back to grad school uh, as a financial engineer. And I'm telling you guys this because I followed my intuition. And today, looking back, I don't regret. So follow your intuition, never, never ignore your intuition. Women special, have a special power in terms of uh, anticipating things, so lead with that intuition. So when I moved to New York, it wasn't easy. Um, as an immigrant, breaking through Wall Street was not easy. And 2008, 2009, 10 was spe specifically difficult for Wall Street. So I was looking at my profile. Um, I came into uh, the grad program assuming that, uh, okay, I'm a gold medalist, undergrad, I can wing it through, I can, I can work hard, I can get, it, get there. But when I came to New York, what I realized is that's not just enough. So I looked at my classroom, everybody's profile looked very similar. Then there are two things that I did. The first one is how should I, like, I need to differentiate my profile from others. So always think about what is that special thing that you're going to add to the table. So that thought process helped me to land on an internship, which was a very difficult path through a distant network. Network is the third point that I want to leave with you guys. Networks can make wonder. If not, if, if I didn't have that opportunity that day, I wouldn't have landed an interview with Morgan Stanley as an immigrant. So. Um, I said three things now, follow your intuition, leverage your network, the, figure out what is that in you that's special that you can bring to the table, it can be small. 12 years looking back, um, I've taken, I've done various different roles. Uh, I want to leave the fourth point with you all and uh, I'm going to conclude. Looking back 12 years, um, many different roles, my career wasn't linear at Morgan Stanley, there were many times I felt I wasn't performing well. There were many times I felt I wasn't performing well, but my managers thought I did really well. So um, I think Tammy was talking about advocating for ourselves. So let's, let's think about um, if we think we are advocating 100%, that means we are just 75%. So let's overshoot. 
overshoot is, is, is a message that I would deliver and today, even still now, till now, I would still undershoot. Um, so it's, it's a work in progress for me. So the careers are non-linear. There, there are many moments in my career where I felt this is not the place for me or this is not where I would be successful. Especially going through the pregnancy, getting back to work after my daughter was born was very, very difficult. But in retrospect, I've, I've got a lot of domestic help during that time. I've got a lot of women leaders who I leaned on in the organization to see their career paths as an example and to see it's possible. So in retrospect, I'm really, really proud of where I am today. I'm happy that I took those decisions because today I can give a lot more exposure to my eight-year-old than what, would I, what, what I would have done if I paused my career there. So f the fourth point that I wanted to leave you all with is um, there will be short-term obstacles. I think Tammy mentioned you're, you might feel that you're going in circles, but it's a staircase. There may be short-term obstacles, but we need to develop our brain power, thinking power to think beyond that. Think beyond that short-term obstacles. And one of the techniques that has been quite helpful for me is just applying my work to my mental process. I tend to think about situations in terms of scenarios. If this situation turns out like this, the outcome will be X. Is that the outcome that I want? Or is there an outcome that I like? How do I turn the situation into an outcome that I like? Sometimes it's not possible, then I need to go for the second best. So training your brain to think in a framework helps. Now just want to reflect back. Today I don't regret uh, that I spent so much time learning physics, learning electrical engineering, but that, that education taught me that thought process, breaking down a problem into smaller steps and figuring out a solution. So. With that, I want to conclude by saying congratulations, she jobs. And if you have girls, encourage them to think about problem solving, and expose them to the real world problems. And um, again, um, if Swati and your team, if you guys have you know, any questions, anybody struggling with a situation in their career advancement, I'm here to help. So they can always reach out to me.